This is a Squiz Kids podcast. Your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. Each week we give the world globe a spin and see where we land. Then we take the kids of Australia on an audio excursion to visit that country and its people. I'm Amanda Bauer and today on Squiz the World we're visiting the most popular holiday destination in all of South and Central America. It's a place famous for its beaches and its tacos. You got it, we're going to Mexico. Right now is an especially fun time to be visiting the United States of Mexico, which shares a long border with the United States of America. And that's because Day of the Dead is celebrated on November 1st and 2nd. You heard all about that in this week's Shortcut. Of course, if you're listening a little bit later, I'll put links in your episode notes. So strap yourselves in to the Squiz Kids Superfast Supersonic Jetliner as we take off and take a squiz at Mexico. Just the facts. Mexico has a rich, ancient history. Humans have been living here for more than 20,000 years. Different civilizations developed and fell over the thousands of years, from the Olmec to the Maya, the Zapotec, and then the Aztecs. Then, in 1517, Spanish explorers began to arrive. And in 1521, after killing the leader of the Aztecs, they claimed the land and called it New Spain. For 300 years, the Spanish ruled, until on September 16, 1810, a Catholic priest made a speech that set the War of Independence in motion. Eleven years, one week and four days later, the Mexicans marched into the capital, Mexico City, and declared victory. Here's a funny thing about that capital. The Aztecs chose its location for one of their sacred buildings, but that happened to be on top of a lake. When the Spanish came along, they built their capital on top of the Aztec structures. But because there's mud and water underneath, Mexico City is sinking. Parts of it lean like Italy's famous Tower of Pisa, and the city sinks around 12 centimetres every year. That's incredible. Take out your ruler and have a look at 12 centimetres. That's quite a drop in just one year. How far would it have dropped over your lifetime? Speaking of sinking, Mexico has thousands of ancient sinkholes which are now filled with fresh water and are called cenotes. I've put a link in your episode notes to some photos and descriptions of the most famous. As soon as you take a look at the sparkling underground water, caves and surrounding jungle, you'll understand why they're one of Mexico's biggest tourist attractions. Now, whenever you do travel, it's important to learn a few words in that country's language. It's a great way to show respect. So let's learn the lingo. The Mexican government recognises 68 official national languages. 63 of them are Indigenous and there are around 350 dialects of those languages. But most people do speak Spanish as their first language, which perhaps isn't surprising given that the Spanish ruled over Mexico for 300 years. We've got Squiz Kid Zara here to teach us a thing or two about Mexican Spanish. Hi, my name is Zara and I'm 10 years old. I live in Sydney and I speak Spanish because my mum is Mexican. Here's how you say, hello, how are you? Hola, como estas? And here's how you say, thank you. Gracias. And this is how you say goodbye. Adios. A huge gracias to you, Zara. Now that we can communicate a little bit, it's time for school. Mexico is home to the world's biggest university. An astonishing 300,000 students go to UNAM, which translates to the National Autonomous University of Mexico. That's more than the entire population of Hobart. But here's the thing. Despite all those uni students, only two out of three kids in Mexico finish high school. In Australia, more than 8 out of 10 kids finish Year 12. Not only does Mexico give public schools very little money and not enough teachers, another big challenge is a high percentage of Mexican kids live in rural areas and they need to help their families on the farm. (laughs) That makes going to school full-time really tricky. Even though there's a lot about Mexican schools that could be better, here's something pretty cool. 
Partly because so many tourists come to Mexico, there's a rule that students have to learn a second language. In most Mexican schools, the day is divided, with half being taught in Spanish and the second half being taught in a second language. That's called bilingual education. Bi meaning two and lingua being the Latin word for language. There are a few bilingual schools in Australia, but they're pretty rare. Speaking of learning new things, I discovered something really surprising about Mexico. Believe it or not. If I said pyramid to you, what country would you think of? Egypt, right? Well, believe it or not, the biggest pyramid in the world is actually in Mexico. And there are another 32 pyramids dotted around the country. Now, the Egyptian pyramids were built about 4,500 years ago, and the ones in Mexico are much younger. There's no evidence of any connection or contact between the cultures, so the reason both places have pyramids is probably just that back then it was the most sensible way of building a tall, stable structure. A wide base getting narrower as it went up. The giant pyramid of Cholula in Mexico has a base four times bigger than the Great Pyramid at Giza in Egypt, and nearly twice the volume. Not only is it the biggest pyramid in the world, it's also the biggest monument ever constructed anywhere by any civilization. Wow! So why haven't most of us heard about it before? Well, one big reason is that the Pyramid of Cholula is hidden under a mountain. The pyramid started being built about 2,300 years ago and it was added onto over the years by different civilizations. Each time they used something called adobe bricks. These are made of mud and straw and in the humid environment of Mexico it's easy for plants to start growing on it. When the Spanish conquered the city of Cholula in 1519, the pyramid was completely hidden by vegetation. The Catholic conquerors built a church on top of what they thought was just a mountain. And it wasn't until 1910 that the gigantic pyramid beneath was discovered. Today, the city has built kilometres of tunnels for people to explore the underground pyramid. I'll put a link in your episode notes for you to take a tour on your own. OK, after a day spent exploring pyramids, I'm starving. I think it might be... Dinner time. Do you like eating corn or tomatoes? Zucchini? Anything flavoured vanilla? Or perhaps my personal favourite, chocolate? Yes! Well, you have Mexico to thank for all those foods. Each one of them, as well as many different types of beans, are indigenous to this Central American country. And although you might know tacos the best, the national dish of Mexico is actually something called mole. It's spelled M-O-L-E, but it has nothing to do with the creature that lives underground. The word comes from an indigenous word meaning sauce, and mole is poured over all kinds of meat dishes in Mexico. The most famous version of mole is mole poblano, which comes from the town of Puebla, and it's made with chili and chocolate. It's not sweet, it's rich and delicious. I've put a recipe in your episode notes. There are lots of ingredients, but it's not all that complicated. Time for the Quiz! This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. What is happening to Mexico City every year? Yeah, it's sinking by 12 centimetres each year. Question number two. What did the Spanish build on top of the Pyramid of Cholula? That's right, they built a church. And question number three. Name one of the fruits or vegetables that come from Mexico. If you said corn, zucchini or tomatoes, give yourself a pat on the back. If you said chocolate and you can prove that it's a fruit, you can have an extra point. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for staying curious about the world and joining me on this incredible trip to Mexico. Now get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out. These episodes are edited and engineered by Carter Quinn.